Today is truly a special day here in Panmunjom as we commemorate the 63rd anniversary of the signing of the Armistice Agreement. This agreement, which took two years and 17 days of challenging negotiations to reach, ended over three years of bloodshed and aimed to provide a framework for reconciliation. While we have not reached that final conclusion of peace, the Armistice Agreement remains an effective instrument to settle disputes and limit misunderstandings between the differing parties. It endures as an agreement that provides buffers, such as provisions for the United Nations Command Troops and the four-kilometer-deep demilitarized zone, as well as procedures which call for dialogue over disputed actions. Together, these have helped calm tensions by settling many issues over the past six decades and continue to mitigate the risk of miscalculation and the resumption of hostilities. There are many events that happened over the past 63 years and that without the armistice could have reignited into another Korean War. Without the agreement and its buffers, we would almost certainly have seen several of the provocations, the provocative border skirmishes of the past six decades spread like wildfire into larger battles. Without the armistice agreement, the 1976 killing of two U.S. soldiers within the Joint Security Area could have quickly spread a flame of fury across the peninsula. But the agreement helped to guide the reaction to be a strong, yet restrained, response. And tragedies such as the sinking of the Chonan that killed 46 South Korean sailors, or the artillery attack against Yongpyeong-do, killing two South Korean Marines and two South Korean civilians, these could have escalated also into an all-out war had it not been for an internationally backed agreement that helped to tailor a suitable response. Even this last summer, with the egregious landmine attack that seriously wounded two South Korean soldiers and the escalation of tensions that followed over the succeeding weeks, the armistice agreement caused the responses to be measured, not unlimited. Maintaining the armistice is a continuous requirement that demands commitments of time, effort, and resources. Our United Nations Command Service members are among these resources, and they all remain dedicated to defending the Republic of Korea, creating conditions for further development and prosperity, and one day, reunification. I want to commend the honorable men and women who have committed themselves to this duty. They represent and honor the sacrifice of nearly 180,000 men and women who died while fighting under the UN flag. I'm honored to serve as their commander, and they are serving in the finest traditions of the United Nations Command and its storied history. I also want to commend the United Nations Command Military Armistice Commission and the Neutral Nations Supervisory Commission who monitor and investigate any reported violations of the agreement. They provide an impartial view and they ensure transparency of the complex situations on the Korean Peninsula. As we stand here today, we must also remember the Korean War veterans from around the world, all who served here, as their sacrifices will never be forgotten. President Dwight D. Eisenhower, only an hour after the signing of the armistice, stated, quote, there is in this moment of sober satisfaction one thought that must discipline our emotions and steady our resolution. It is this. We have won an armistice on a single battleground, not peace in the world. We may not now relax our guard nor cease our quest, 
we and our United Nations allies must be vigilant against the possibility of untoward developments, end quote. These words continue to resound here in the Republic of Korea as we celebrate the end to hostilities while remaining vigilant to the threats that remain. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for being here today and for continuing to go together as allies. Kamsamidida, kachikapsida.